Good morning. And it's not normal for us to say good morning at the start of a live stream because we don't do many games before midday. But today is an exception. Today we have the Danska Bank and it's the McCormick Cup final for under 16 and a half. Now it's not the McCrory Cup, it's not the top competitions, but you know, we need to be careful with language like that. It's not fair. You've got to be fair across the board. And the beauty of the GAA and the beauty of Ulster Schools is that all of these tournaments are equally as important. And that is what we are seeing today because the crowd is here and it's like an All-Ireland final to the crowd is, that is here. And I see Pat Blake down below, one of the great sponsors from Derry Lynn, of course, and used to be a, a doing a bit of broadcasting himself back in the day. I worked with him back in the day. And, you know, fellas like that are here and Dominic Corrigan is back at his old school. So many fantastic stories and only the GAA would bring out stories like this at a grade D Ulster Schools final. It really is fantastic. It is all that is good in the GAA and all that is good in the country as well. And I see along with Pat Blake behind him down at the front is Peter McGinnity. So all the big names past and present from Fermanagh GAA are here supporting little Derry Lynn, St Aidan's Derry Lynn. And I say little, I'm sure they won't mind that, but the fact is 255 pupils is all they have in the whole school and half of them are girls whereas Kalastia first you have 945 it really is city versus country the team coming out there in the Kilkenny jerseys that is St Aidan's they are wearing the black and amber you might also say Ballycran from County Down the colours Famous colours, might be hard to see the numbers on them, but those are the colours, that's my problem, I'll not worry about that. Lots of colour here in the ground as well, supporting them. Lots of flags around the place, and we will be giving out the teams in a minute or two, but let's just look at the team photograph being taken first. I see Bert Trollin over there, he's come all the way down from Glenavy, and I see the manager Richie O'Callaghan there, waiting for his players and saying just calm it and enjoy the occasion, I say, is probably the message that he is giving to them for this game so great to have everybody with us on youtube and an absolute delight to be back doing ulster schools and to be doing this special special final listen to that well there's the flags up in front of us that'll block our view a little bit unfortunately but there's nothing you can do because there's hundreds of them we have created a bit of room in front of us here but they will want to fly those flags as much as they can it's all part of the atmosphere and it is a great atmosphere here at Ahar St. McCartan's. It's a terrific venue. And the kids are out. School's out on a Friday morning. So they're delighted to get out of school and even more delighted to support their team. So we're on YouTube. You are more than welcome to leave a comment there in the live chat. And we'll read them out as we go on. So that's the build up we'll get round to the teams in just a second and i'll keep an eye on all the messages and see how many people are watching and where you're watching around the world australia middle east whatever i'm sure there's past pupils around the place and i'm sure there's some in classrooms watching under the desk maybe or maybe have it on big screens in the staff room let us know where you're watching i know the st aidan's Derry lynn draw from clubs like belnalek Kinali. And what's the other one? Well, Derry Lynn, of course, as well. And Timor, Timor Shamrocks, whereas Kalastia first year from Belfast. Well, you have the Neavenna up in Glen Gormley, you have Davids, Gordon Amona, you have O'Donnell's, the ODs, you have the Johnny's, St. John's, you have Sarsfields, clubs like that there. So it's not all about St. Aidan's Derry Lynn, although we are down that part of the country nearly in Fermanagh. It's about Kalastia first year from Belfast as well. It's a city versus country. A few buses have come down from Kalastia first year for the game. They'll be coming out in the next minute or so. But let's look at the team starting with the Kalastia first year team then. Let's put them up on the screen. The manager is Kieran Doherty, assisted today by Paddy McDonald. Bride. He's also got Ryan Paul Callahan, and he's here on paternity leave. He came on paternity leave. He got special permission to be here. Wouldn't miss it. And Brona Keegan is in as well from Antrim Ladies. So let's look at their team then. In goals, you have Cahill Murphy, 16 years old tomorrow. So he's looking for a perfect birthday for him, a perfect birthday party starting early. And also on the team there, we have another birthday boy at number eight, Barry El Hueta from Gordon Amona, 16 just on Tuesday there. And number 14, Nathan McKenna, was 15 yesterday from he's with the Gordon Amona Club as well as Barry. So three birthdays for them this week. They're captained by number 15, Conal McMahon. And looking at the rest of the team, you see two Quins at the back, four and five, Aaron and Dara from Neavenna and Glengormley. They are twins. And an interesting thing as well is that Jared Doak, number three, 
And number nine, Noah O'Donnell, don't even have a club. They don't have a GEA club. And for a lot of people in the GEA, that's kind of unheard of. They don't understand that. But they actually are not affiliated. They have not signed up for a club. So have a look at them today if you're in Belfast and with a club. And you might say, well, we should get them boys signed up. So we'll see what they can do today. So that is the Kalastia First Year team. Let's have a look at St. Aidan's Derry Lynn now. Managed by Richie O'Callaghan, supported by a certain Don Cardigan who has won the Hogan Cup with St. Michael's in a skill and in many years he was at that school but now he's back at his old school and he's delighted to be helping out there and I'd say today would mean as much to him as winning the Hogan Cup not trying to put words in his mouth but that's the sort of guy Dom is and that's what the GEA does to you the two captains, joint captains, 11 and 12 that's Dan O'Connor and Kieran Shannon at 12 he's from Timor and Dan O'Connor is from Belnalek Number 14 is Tomas Cathcart. He's from Canale. Ryan, excuse me, Ryan Ray at number 10. He's the head boy. And he is from Canale as well. And in defence, you have two McCaffreys from different clubs. Alex McCaffrey at 6. Actually, Jason McCaffrey at 7 is from Derry Lynn. Devin Quinn is bell in the leg. Darren McGuire, the goalkeeper, Derry Lynn. Conal Crudden, Canale. Lawrence Dune is Derry Lynn. And Ronan Brennan, Canale. And you might notice him. Falling into the local dialect, Derlin. They don't even bother pronouncing the Y, as far as I know, anyway. You might correct me on that. Feel free to correct me on the live chat there on the YouTube. We'll keep an eye on the messages there. If I make any mistakes or I get anything wrong, let me know. But I've tried very hard over the last day to get all the names absolutely correct. And the pronunciations, even Barry Elhueta, number eight for Kalastia First Year. His father is from Morocco, would you believe? And looking around the rest, what else have I got to tell you? Well, I should mention the subs as well. They're very important as well. So let's go and mention the subs. St. Aidan's, they have 16 as Thomas Fitzpatrick, 17 Matthew Ferguson, 18 Cahar Drum, 19 Sean Maguire, 20 Cahar Riley, 21 Nathan Boyle, 22 Ben Malanafi, 23 Aidan Leonard, 24 Ryan McBrien, 25 Cian McHugh, 26 Gavin McBrien, 27 Owen Crahan, 28, Shea Pryor. 29, Conan McManus. Nearly finished. 30, Shanna Owens. 31, Oren Dolan. And 32, Turlock Murphy. And they are sponsored by NSERC. So let's give the subs for the other team, Kalastia First Year as well, in the interest of fairness. 16, Oren Maguire for the Belfast boys. 17, Tiernan Smith. 18, Ollie McCart. 19, Delta Keenan. 20, Niall O'Hanlon, 21, Nathan Trainer, 22, Finton McCollum, 23, Shea McKee, 24, Christopher Roberts, and 25, Kiernan Carroll. So this is the Danske Bank McCormick Cup final, and it's named after a man called Mick McCormick, who won a McCrory Cup in the late 40s, around 1948, with McCartans in Monaghan. So that's the history, and there is a lot of history here, because St. Aidan's Derry Lynn have been going exactly 51 years and they've never been in an Ulster final well the boys haven't so a momentous occasion is what the principal Pat McTaggart has described it as and an historic one the girls did get to an Ulster final in 2008 with the likes of Joanne Doonan who of course went off to Australia and is now back for Fermanagh playing this Sunday of course in the National League for them so they won an Ulster or rather played in an Ulster I can't remember if they won it actually but they did play in one in 2008 but it's taken 51 years for the boys to get to the final. They're a small school, but they have some big names and some big interest. Because Maliki O'Rourke was at the school. He now manages Waddy Grahams. And he put a message online for them yesterday, as did Peter Canavan. See, the magic of the GAA, this is where the magic is. The Dalton, the Ranafast, the McGreevy, these sort of competitions, fantastic competitions. You know all about the McCrory, but right down the list of Ulster Schools competitions, you see all these fantastic stories. I remember doing games years ago, and I think it was Ben McCarran, who I saw playing the other night for Jordanstown. I think it was him with Steelstown, or one of the Derry, was it Lumen Christie? And he went in a solo run, and it, it's still one of the best videos you'll ever see some fantastic videos from Ulster schools it's just brilliant stories and it's really the foundation of the success of the GEA in Ulster the referee is Martin Coyle and he's from Cookstown and it's a very solid pitch out there it's one of the best you will find even in December there we were here and it was pouring rain he's definitely Cookstown you see the the Tyrone and the McAleer rush on his top there and yet this pitch was absolutely perfect there's Katrina McManus Brennan hope she doesn't mind me hyphenating her name there she is out there and it's the 
uh, from Anna Herald, and she's done some great work in promoting this occasion. Here's some interviews with the likes of Pat McTaggart, who said he's been at the school as a man and a boy. Pupil in 1972, teacher from 1983, and now principal for 10 years. So it's been his life. What would it mean to Pat McTaggart today to win this today? And also for the likes of Tony McCaffrey, who was at the school for so long as well. And he is a former secretary of Ulster Vocational Schools. And he is to present the trophy, or we hope that he will today. Tommy Rogers is the coordinator of the competition, and he is here as well. So a lot of talk and a lot of passion around the boys in black and amber and they will go into this game hoping to deliver they've caught their imagination down in their area there's no doubt about that but what about Kalashtia first year we are waiting for them to come out actually and they haven't come out they were warming up they've gone back in and it's 11 28 so they're only two minutes away from the game and there's still photographers waiting to get a shot of them but they haven't actually been able to get them out of the dressing room just yet so they're being maybe cool and calm and collected there's the photographers pointing now there's bird on the left with that jazzy coat of his and here we come now this is kalastia first year with jazzy jerseys as well very nice modern looking jerseys as they come out for their photograph from west belfast irish speaking school on the falls road cahill murphy is from sedandas ocean haney from davits Dara Quinn St. Andrews, Rory Scullion is Gort Namona up in the Mona Bypass there. And Oshin Cusick at 11 is from Sarsfields. Fionn McCallan is from the Johnnies. Same club as Paddy McBride, who plays for Antrim and is helping out with the management today, giving Kieran Doherty a hand. And no better man, great supporter of schools football as well as Paddy. And Tomas Adams at number 13 is another Johnnies man. Now, they were in the final of this last year and they lost to Moville Community College. And they are very happy to be here today. And you have to give credit to the managers and the setup in the school. They're teaching them all the right way. They have them cleaning the dressing rooms. They have them respecting the jerseys, folding the jerseys. So they've got all the principles in place. And uh, they're a lovable bunch, I'm told. And they will be up for this today. And yes. A lot of them will play soccer, but Gaelic very much at the heart of their community as well. And today is all about community. I mean, what other sport would you get it on a Friday morning? There's Paddy McBride in the background. Where else would you get it? A Friday morning and two schools participating here in its fifth years. And a magnificent turnout. And there's young here, there's old here. And there's a superb crowd and superb atmosphere and superb interest. And we hope a superb audience on the stream as well. There's about 400 devices online. That's a huge audience for a school's game. But as I say, this is the beauty of grassroots GEA, isn't it? And you have to credit men who have kept this going and put in so much work down the years for Ulster Schools. Alexa Sean McGordy, who's here today and spends so much time going around all of these finals and competitions and keeping them taking over and making sure everything is done right and Seamus Woods who actually goes all the way back to teaching me at OMA CBS and will not even say how long ago that was and then you've Tommy Rogers organizing the competition and so many great names from St Michael's in Eskillen down the years like Peter McGinnity who I mentioned there and Dom Corrigan people like that but those boys out there at the minute are just concentrating play the football concentrate on the ball Never mind the occasion. Don't let it pass you by. Just enjoy it, but focus on winning the ball and doing what you do best. And Dom Corrigan, great to see him out there in the middle. And I'm sure he's absolutely loving it after all the years that he was involved with St. Michael's in Eskillen and the big McCurry Cup matches and the Hogan Cup matches and with Fermanagh as well, of course, and the smile on his face. Well, there's nothing like going back to your own school and seeing them in their first final in 51 years. What a thrill it must be. That's the beauty, as I say, of the GEA. He's checking if there's any wind. I don't think there is. No rain either. And all is set. We're going to be after 11.30 before we get going here. But the referee is doing his best. Kalastia first year's captain is there, number 15. That's Conal McMahon. And on the left, well, they have two captains from 
St. Aidan's. They're handing over the team sheets there. Which one has gone up for the toss? I can't quite see. Is it 11 or is it 12? 11 is Dan O'Connor. 12 is Kieran Shannon. It is 11. Dan, whose favourite player is the Gooch. And number 12, Kieran Shannon, his favourite player is the dub, Jack McCaffrey. So I don't think it really matters who wins the toss. A little handshake between them. And a handshake with the managers as well. So we're behind schedule here, but it was an early start anyway. It's going to be high noon by the time we get going here, maybe. Somebody said take a breath, so I'm taking a breath. We're now on the way to 500 devices. The audience is building. Has there ever been so much interest in a school's game at this level? Certainly don't think a game has ever been streamed at this level, but it is an absolute pleasure to be able to do it. Love breaking new ground. Martin Coyle having a word with the photographer there. Having a word now with the captains laying down the laws. And we are, I'd say, a couple of minutes or away from starting this game. So to be clear, in the black and amber, it is in Aidan's Derry Lynn from Fermanagh. And the Danske Bank Ulster Schools McCormick Cup final here in Ahar. Only on YouTube. Don't click on any of those terrible scammer links, whatever you do. Don't be paying for it. It's completely free, thanks to the two schools involved. Haven't got any messages yet from staff rooms. I'm sure they're watching in the schools and maybe got it on the big screens. There's the final words been given. That's Richie O'Callaghan in the middle there. And he has said his final bit and left it to them. And maybe the captains will now have a last word. And what an occasion. What a day for these lads. What a thrill. So many comments online and so many good luck wishes. Not just from the likes of Peter Canavan and Malik O'Rourke, but the Tublin Paddies and all sorts of ones all over the place. Just shows what can happen in a small area like Derry Lynn and they've all got behind them there's three or four clubs in the area and they're all supporting from that area and other places in Fermanagh as well and there's Kalastra first year from the big city from West Belfast in the green and Kieran Doherty having a word with him he's been with all these lads since first year so it's a proud day for him he's happy to be here today they had a rough time last year I think they lost all their games but this year They've done extremely well. They've improved as they've gone on and they're enjoying it. That's the key. So it's been rather a longer build-up than we expected. But, you know, we're not in any rush. I'm sure you aren't either. So let's get going here and see what happens here. We're all very excited for this game. So CF, Kalashja first year. And DER, Derry Lynn. And it looks like Kalastia first year are playing from right to left. And I see number 11 has gone to midfield. That's Oshin Cusick alongside Noah O'Donnell. And that's the traditional 8 and 9 for the boys in the black and amber. They look like the Cats from Kilkenny. The audience building, the excitement building, it's tense here. We need to get underway. What a perfect setting. Danske Bank Ulster Schools at its very best. This is where the magic is. Fantastic pitch, fantastic atmosphere. A Friday morning early in January. Sure, where else would you get it? And what more could you want? Martin Coyle from Cookstown in Tyrone gets us underway. Danske Bank. Ulster Schools McCormick Cup final and listen to the roar even from the first challenge in the game and it's a free right away for St. Aidan's Derry Lynn and the referee already writing in his book 
And that looks like a painful one. After all that build-up, we had just a couple of seconds and then a stoppage. And Richie O'Callaghan a little bit concerned. He's coming in as well. Hopefully it's nothing serious, but certainly the young fella took a bit of a bang there. A wee bit of magic water will do the trick, hopefully. A lot of silly stuff I have to say in the comments in the live chat. Come on, lads, now let's be a little bit mature about it, please. If you don't mind. So, here we go again. Take two, St. Aidan's Derry Lynn. Number 12, Kieran Shannon. Joint captain of the team. Oh, he puts a direct high ball in there. Now it's going over the top. The keeper should get this, and he does. That's Cahill Murphy. Does well to feed it out to Rory Scullion. And a late challenge going in on him that the referee says go on ahead because they've got possession. He gives them advantage and a great ball from Noah O'Donnell cross field. And this is good football from the Belfast boys. And there's room in front of them here, which they can run into and they do. This is Dara Quinn who just checks and comes back. And I see a 24 out there, by the way. Could be a turnover here and is for Derry Lynn. And you see the 24 making a challenge. So a late change there, obviously, for Kalastia first year. 24 is Christopher Roberts. So he has started the game, just to be clear. Direct ball again, played in, and the big fella in at full forward leaves it back. That's good play by the target man in there, Tomas Cathcart. And the shot comes in looking for the first score. Keeper watches it, and it could have ended up in the net and might still do. And still there's a chance of a goal, all off the post. Oh, what drama early on. It's Kieran Shannon. Went for goal, came off the post. So unlucky. Could have been a goal initially. Should have been a goal the second time, but wasn't. But still, the momentum is with Derry Lynn. Disappointment at not getting the goal, but promise there. And they're getting... A lot of good kick passes in. That's another brilliant one. They're letting the ball do the work, and it's so refreshing to see. That's one of the beauties of Ulster schools as well at this level. You never know what you're going to get, but they tend to just go for it, which is fantastic. Never mind this negative stuff. Lovely skill coming forward there. Ryan Ray gives it in again, looking for Cathcart. He's obviously the target man. They keep booting the ball in towards him. No score just yet, but boy, did we come close. Rory Scullion, centre half pike comes forward and realises he needs to get a bit of support so he comes back. There's nobody with him. Direct ball again and that's Noah O'Donnell. Pumps it into the corner and it's a terrific ball. The only man there in green is Nathan McKenna and he got it. Now the shot comes in from Thomas Adams but it's not on target and it's well taken by Cahill Murphy. Shannon had that Effort and goal a minute ago. Denied by the base of the post. Two tough hits going in. The referee says at least one of them was illegal. Dan O'Connor. Cathcart. This time he does get it. The ball sticks and he turns and goes. Make it the first score here. Goes for a point. I think it's gone right across and wide. And it has gone wide. But a very clear tactic from Terry Lynn, get it up to the big fella, and you can see why he's a good player. We're now nearly at 600 devices. Word is getting round about this special game here on a Friday morning. The goalkeeper is Cahill Murphy. He'll be 16 years old tomorrow. Puts it high up into the air, but it goes straight to Kieran Shannon. He gets there first and gets his free. Gives it to his fellow captain, Dan O'Connor, and he's fouled as well. Pattern being set, Derry Lynn attacking, and Kalastia first year been forced to foul quite a lot, and the referee is busy marking in his book. So Tomas Cathcart, 15 years old, from Canoli, the Brian Barus. Fancies this one off his left. His kick at goal a minute ago was off his right foot. 
That's off his left, but it's gone over to the left and wide. Good length on it, just not quite the direction, but like the game, just need to settle down a bit. So the last kick out went long and went to the opposition. This one goes short and goes to James McNally from the Johnnies in Belfast. Corrigan Park is the base for that famous club on the White Rock Road. So a real city v country feel about this as a set. The boys down from the big smoke down the M1. It's a nice ball to Scullion. To El Weta, number eight. Scullion again, under a lot of pressure. Leaves it off to McCallan. He tries to leave it off. This is very tight, but there's a serious press going on. O'Donnell again. Last year, first year. Now you find that they have the baller in the middle, and that's because Derry Lynn have sat very, very deep. They've sat in and they're not pressing too much. So then the big ball comes in. And Kalasha first, you're looking to get the first score of the game. Cusick is there. He's trying to work his way through and doesn't. And he's dispossessed. And the referee says no foul there. That's a good turnover. And it's a chance for Derry Lynn to get up the pitch. And that looks like a foul right over by the Derry Lynn dugout. And it is. So not too far for the physio to go to... Give a little bit of treatment there. Challenges a little bit crude at times and a little bit rough. The referee has it and has given plenty of freeze. And hopefully and thankfully nobody seems to be hurt too much over there. But certainly physical in the exchanges early on from Kalastia first year. But it's partly because of the pressure that has been applied because Daryl Inner going at them all the time and they're drawing freeze. So seven minutes gone, no scores, but plenty of excitement. Now we are over 600 devices, rising all the time. Can we get to the thousand, do you think? Cusick has it again from the Sarsfields Club. Their pitch is known as the Bear Pit. He goes through three or four tackles and eventually the bear is taken down but he gets a free. Didn't like the challenges coming in. But it's a free for Kalashia first year in the green. And they have a chance here for the first score if he can reach it from there. O'Donnell has kicked the ball well so far. I've noticed a couple of his long range kicks but he's taken this one off the ground. I wonder is this because there are a few soccer players up there, but sometimes the soccer players have a good way of kicking it off the ground. We saw a fellow for, for Masters a few weeks ago kicking 245s in the Ulster Minor Club final. That was going to the right and wide. Remains scoreless after eight and a half minutes, which is surprising. I do like a good even game, and it seems to be that. Apart from the scoreline, the team's well matched. Kick out from Murphy, high up the middle, and it breaks to O'Donnell, who gets possession again after missing that free. Gives it inside to the captain, Conal McMahon. This is Dara Quinn. To O'Donnell again, who's involved a lot and plays a nice ball into Nathan McKenna. Nathan tries to get along the end line. And that's a free out. Must have touched it on the ground. Thanks to Connell, who reminds me that that player for four masters was Kevin Muldoon. Thanks for that. That was him. Two 45s and one from outside the 45. Three dead ball kicks, and he's an under 17. I'm not quite sure why the scoreboard says not 311. We have nine and a half minutes gone, and it's 11.47 in the morning by me. Put a good boot behind that. That's a great dig. And he's kept it in as well. Now it's out. But if he'd connected with the previous one that well, it might have gone over. But he didn't give it as much power. But that was a good strike to get another 45. Ten minutes exactly gone. Audience now 650. Noah O'Donnell again. And just to remind... 
clubs in Belfast. This fella isn't affiliated to a club. He's playing midfield and he's obviously very useful. Get him signed up. McMahon, the captain, again gets involved. And this is Dara Quinn. Comes back to O'Donnell. Back to McMahon in the black shorts. Playing it around here. And Derry Lynn sitting very deep and just letting them have it. Scullion gives it in to the 24. That's Christopher Roberts. And now the big ball comes in and that's dangerous. And the keeper has to watch this. The fullback has to watch it. Oh, it's off the crossbar. What a good reaction there from, I'm not sure which forward it is, but a little flick there. Nearly ended up in the net. And now both teams, after 11 minutes, have hit the woodwork. Well, it's scoreless, but it doesn't feel like a scoreless game. And you feel that the drama is only just beginning. Dara Quinn wins that back, and he has his twin brother with him, Aaron Quinn. Both from the Neavana Club and Glen Gormley. And they both get involved there, and they clear their lines really well. O'Donnell again. Kalasja first, you could have had a goal there. He's put it in high again. They do love a high ball, and it nearly worked the last time. Will it work this time? It's broken. They have it. Tackle goes in. Referee says it's okay. I thought the big fella McKenna was going to get a boot at it. They might still they get a boot at that one, but it's still defended well. And Derry Lynn have players back in numbers, and they've repelled that attack as well. This is like the old days of Gaelic football when they booted the ball in catch and kick and put it in there and it's I have to say it's fantastic to watch because you just don't know what's going to happen next I know all these modern coaches want the percentages but nah give me this any day there's another ball booted in and it's gone to Cathcart wants to get on that left foot that's a good pass might have the first score of the game from it and we do Ronan Fitzpatrick from Timor Shamrocks. It's taken 12 and a half minutes, but it's been worth waiting for. And Terry Lynn are in front. Murphy's kick out. Quinn tries to get there, but Terry Lynn have it. Their tails are up. They're in the lead. They're looking for another one. Two challenges go in. They spill it, but Owen McTiernan has it. Oh, brilliant block by Dara Quinn. Dara's been everywhere in this game on the right and the left. Actually, it wasn't him. It was 15, not five. It was the captain, but it still ends up going over the bar despite the best efforts of the Kalastia first year captain, number 15, Conal McMahon. Put in a great block and tried to get in the way of the second one as well. But Derry Lynn have another score. It's 2 to 0. Oshin Heaney from the Davids Club. Number two for Kalastia First year. Seven is James McNally. He's looking for O'Donnell, but doesn't get there. But O'Donnell does brilliantly to win it. And he does brilliantly again to persist and to still have it. And plays a soccer style ball up, but. I think Ronan Brennan's going to get there first and he gets a free for the nudge in the back from McCallan. Dan O'Connor comes looking for the ball from the free and spreads the play. That's good, intelligent football. Gets it back again. Looks for the kick pass again and finds Finbar, or rather Ryan Ray. Off he goes. Tugged by McMahon, but the referee says no foul there. Great pressure exerted. And referee doing really well, I think, to let the game go a lot here. It's really contributing to the spectacle. And that's brilliant play again from O'Donnell. This time he does find McCallan. Down in that left corner, and he gets a free. Kalastia first, you had two points to nil down after the first quarter. We're just coming up to exactly the first quarter ending without a score, but boy, did they come close to a goal. This is O'Donnell, who's been 
at the heart of most of their attacks and he's taken all the frees and he's putting balls in there high low off the ground every way and that's a great dig and it's right in there again and they have to punch it clear and they do Dara Donegan was there number nine to pick it up don't know who got the fist to it but they're aware of that threat of the high ball coming in and they're just getting it out but it's looking it's coming right back again because Dara Quinn has it again nice little spin by him and off he goes good direct football a little push on the back surely and indeed the referee's right there yeah really impressed by this young referee Martin Coyle handling this game really well he's got a good tempo about it and not too many stoppages and that's a good kick football this is O'Donnell coming over again similar position to a one earlier on wonder will he get this one over they could do with they could do with a first score they're only two points down but just to get them on the scoreboard and settle it it's high is it gone wide it has it's gone just to the right unlucky we're at over 700 devices now thanks to Cameron for pointing that out to me Is there any work being done around the country today, especially in the schools? Are they all watching us? Good kick out by Dara Maguire, but it's that man O'Donnell again, but it's a poor ball. There was two or three men in green there, but it bounced all the way through. And the ball will bounce very well on this pitch, despite the weather that we've had and the winter weather, you know, even though it's been quite chilly the last week, a lot of rain before that, but this is a fantastic surface. So the ball will bounce through. Great setting and fair play to the local club. Last year first, you well set up there to have a sweeper in there to pick that ball and turn defence into attack. That was great play by Scullion. A good play also by Kuzik. The six and the 11. Seven is James McNally. You certainly have had plenty of the ball. Now usually when they come to here, they just put it into the big fella and they've got it there. Oh, he's taking it as well. He's two men around him. Needs a little bit of help and he's trying to get through to get a score. Nathan McKenna. And he's just outnumbered in the end and needed a bit of help but didn't get it and that's a free out. Frustration on the sideline for the manager, Kieran Doherty. I like their approach, putting it in there. And they could have had two or three goals but they haven't had any. Derry Lynn defence has been resolute. This is Ray, tackled by the captain for Kalasha first. And he gets a free out of that. If the referee indicates that it was a shoulder on him. Now he's gone down injured, but boy, did he fight to win that ball back. That is leadership for you. He's getting a little bit of treatment now. Hopefully that's nothing serious because he's obviously a key man he put in that brilliant block a few minutes ago and he's turned that over now it's chilly here on this january 12th morning in county tyrone or are we into no we're not into the afternoon just yet nearly there but i saw one of the lads there removing his under armor must be warm when you're running about out there McMahon looks okay, he's hobbling a bit, but at least he's on his feet and is going to continue. Colonel McMahon from the Sarsfields Club in West Belfast. Good free, and shows well. A little bit of a slip in the pitch here. It is firm, but he does get a free. And that's Fionn McCallan. Takes it quickly, but it doesn't stick. And it's a sideline ball to Derry Lynn. There's certainly plenty of heart and endeavour about this Kalastia first year team. Mightn't quite have the savvy just yet to get a few scores, but they battle as you see there and they win the ball, but then they don't hold on to it. And it's the number eight, Gavin McCann. Oh, brilliantly taken by Quinn. I've been really impressed by him. He's been one of the best players, him and O'Donnell. Now, the referee says that's okay. I thought there might have been a foul there. He certainly collided, but the referee says it's okay, but Dara has stayed down. Tough challenge going in, and the referee says that's a foul. Dara Quinn will get a little bit of treatment. 
20 minutes gone and we've had a few stoppages like this such as being the 100% heart and commitment by the players going into every challenge lovely little turn of pace there and rather crudely fouled there by Ocean Heaney and the referee goes straight to his book there's a tick there for that challenge he knew he was beaten he knew that Kieran Shannon had dropped the shoulder and a little bit of pace to get past him this is Ray off he goes looking for a score the head boy delivers three points of no score for Derry Lynn the head boy in the school and the head boy on the pitch at the minute that was a fine score despite three or four defenders coming in around him 21 minutes gone Nobody going short for the kick out. And the goalkeeper not taking it either. So it goes high up the middle. Cusick goes for it. Number 11. But it breaks for Derry Lynn. And Owen McTernan. 15. Gets it on the break. And a little change of direction there. Nice skill. Tries to play it forward. And it's well taken as well by Dan O'Connor. Foul though by Scullion. O'Connor is offering the ball up or he says do you want me to take it and he's actually saying to the referee that the ball is maybe a little bit soft so they're calling for another one from the umpire seven hundred and fifty devices watching it and that doesn't mean seven hundred and fifty people that could be a staff room with a a lot of teachers or even an assembly hall with a couple of hundred pupils or a clubhouse somewhere so huge audience for this game at this level Cathcart spots the run and this should be a score and it is beautifully taken they caught Kalastia first yet napping a little bit there and I think it was Alex McCaffrey the number six from Timor Shamrocks who got forwards and got the fourth score of the game, 4 0. And as you can hear, the crowd down below us enjoyed that. All right, kick out again. Going straight up the middle, and it's aimed again at Cusick, and this time he gets it and boots it. But right down the throat of the sweeper. A brave effort from Roberts to try and get there. But at the moment, Kalasja first year working hard to win the ball. And they do like to move it direct, but they're giving it straight back to Derry Lynn a lot. And then it's coming right back at them. If they had a, that goal, it'd still be just a point down. But they're four down at the minute and haven't got a score yet. And Derry Lynn using the ball cleverly. And that's a good ball in from McTernan. Oh, he turns inside. And this is a chance for Dan O'Connor. He goes for goal. Oh, what a save. Now the referee said it was over carrying, but never mind that, the goalkeeper didn't know that. That was Cahill Murphy, he'll be 16 years old tomorrow. And that is a super save by the young fella. Twenty-four minutes gone. Free out for Kalasja first year. Again, straight down the middle, most of their kicks, whether they're from freeze or from kickouts, are all 50-50s. Not many going short, they need to get possession and need to make sure. Because the pressure is starting to tell going from left to right. Last year first, you need to do something, and I think they're considering making a change. 19 is warming up. That's Dulta Keenan. So they might be about to bring him in. They certainly need something in attack, but they just need to knit it together, and this is better. They got possession from the kick out. They've gone short. Now a serious press on there, but at least they're trying a different way, and they're trying to keep possession. On the live chat there, Willie Boyd agrees with me. He says, great save from the young boy. Eugene Wynn has just come on. He's enjoying the coverage as well. Thank you, Eugene. And Joe Kane. 
Here's a chance. Thomas Cathcart on his left foot. He's put it very high as he got it on target. He has, you know. 5-0. Now for Derry Lynn. They're beginning to put daylight between the teams. And he gets a low five of acknowledgement there. Great finish from the big fella. I think that's his first score of the game, isn't it? 25 minutes in. And he's got a big kick on him. Fergal says he's watching from Dona Clubhouse. Thank you for that. Great club. I was down there a few months ago. And you've got the Ladies National League there, man. Game there on Sunday. Saw a photograph of the grounds looking splendid. They've done a lot of work on it. Great spot. Great stand. Lovely pitch as well. Super clubhouse. St. Patrick's Dona. The pressure relieved for a minute from the defence of Kalasja first year. And off they go on attack now. Rory Scullion gives it in. And you know they're always looking for McKenna, but he didn't manage to collect at that time. And it's that Derry Lynn full back line that has been really, really strong and has repelled everything. A little bit fortunate with the one that hit the bar, but they've come under a lot of pressure and they've dealt with it really well. And they move the ball through the hands really well. They have a lot of good footballers, speedy footballers. And look at this nice knitting together as well. And good intelligent play. That's lovely football by Ryan Ray. They're a little bit more, shall we say, together when they put the ball forward. Whereas Kalasha first, you just boot it almost without looking. You just put it in there. But it's more measured from Derry Lynn. And that's where they're leading by five points to no score. You still feel Kalasha first, you well in this game though. They're very capable, very good athletes, very good players. And if they can get a break in here, they'll be right back in it. They just need a score. Teresa watching from St. Kevin's. Dara Keown says he's doing his Irish homework. Is this the first score for Kalasha first? Oh, so lucky, so unlucky. They've hit the woodwork twice. 27 and a half minutes gone and they could easily have had a goal and a point. And maybe more, they've had a couple of frees as well. But they remain without a score. They just need something to boost them. But the heads are not going down though, which is good. Laura McDermott says she's watching with Orla from New York. Keep it up, lads. Are you really? Be very, very early in the morning out there, wouldn't it? Are you Derry Lynn or are you Kalastia first? Yeah, let me know. Here come Derry Lynn again looking for another score. They're five up. They're looking to make it six, but that one's been turned over. They've won it back and that's a free in. We're now over 800 devices we're going to make the thousands by the end of the game aren't we so coming up to half time this could be should be a six point now the manager of class first year is on the phone at the minute must have somebody over the other side and they're deciding what to do but they're coming up to half time they're six points down i wonder what the change is going to be they're not going to wait until half time i think they're going to make this change now if they can communicate on the phone and work this out used to have walkie talkies back in the day he's off the phone it's back in the pocket but the sub doesn't seem to be getting instructions to come on just yet but he's waiting and waiting that's delta keenan See what I mean about these kickouts? They're all 50 50. They keep aiming for Cusick and he gets it this time and he loves to turn and go. And then he boots it after losing possession. But again, it's just booted away. Derry Lynn just sitting in there and picking up those balls. And it's a bit of a waste from Kalastia first year. And they're giving possession straight back. Now that's over carrying. They've got a break here, Kalastia first year. But they're putting in, putting in an awful lot of effort and they need to maybe retain possession a little bit smarter. This is the captain, McMahon, who's been a little bit quiet after that injury. But there's that high ball that they love putting in. But that one is not knitting together. It's great when it works, but when it doesn't, it looks wasteful. And it's a tactic that hasn't paid off in the first half. They've come very, very close with that one that hit the bar. But they have not got a single score. 
So they might be thinking about another way in the second half. We're now on added time at the end of the first half. Dara Quinn does brilliantly. Oh, and that's a nice ball. They have measured it in, and he goes low with the shot, doesn't connect. And the goalkeeper did well, and indeed that's going to be a free out. Dara Maguire, the boy from Derry Lynn, does really well there. Nathan McKenna finally got through from that great ball from Quinn, but he just didn't connect. Goalkeeper still had to do his job, and he did that well. Ryan Ray puts it through. This is Dan O'Connor from Belnalek. Beautiful play, lovely balance. Gives it out to the full forward, and that is... Oh, it could end up in the net. It so nearly did. I don't think he meant it to, but it nearly did. But Kalastya first just survive. No goals in the game so far, but boy, have we come close. Bernie Fahey is watching in Canale. Canali, what am I saying? Canali, sorry. Canali, of course. Rosie is cheering on the Cousins, playing for us in Aidens from all the McCarneys. Half time. <laughs> Big round of applause for both sets of players because they put in a supreme effort in that first half from both sides. It's ended not 6 to not not. That's Cusick, Ocean Cusick from the Sarsfields Club in Belfast who did brilliantly in the first half but frustrated that they haven't managed to get a score in that half. He certainly contributed and certainly came close but they have it all to do in the second half but at this level, you know, you can turn it around in a couple of minutes. They won't be giving up. Kalascha first year have come back into the dressing room whereas the boys in black and amber have stayed out. Don't think they're going to go back in, are they? They look to be staying out. They're hardy boys out in the cold, or are they coming over to the dressing rooms now? Either way, we're going to have a break here, and we will be back with the start of the second half. Just taking a check on some of your messages that are coming in on the live chat there. We're now up to nearly 850 messages, or on 850 devices, rather. And we have somebody watching in the... S8 TD room and PCC and Falcara. So lots of people watching from all over the place. Aoife says pronounced Kalastia first year right. Well, I thought it was. Am I doing it wrong? Kalastia first year? Maybe you could let me know. Send me it on phonetic, sir, and I'll do my best. What else have we got there? Lots of support coming in for both. Oh, she has done it phonetically. She says Kalastia. Kalastia? Not Kalastia. Yeah, I thought that's what I was doing. Kalastia. Kal Ashte. Kalastia. Kalastia. All right. I'll keep practicing at halftime. We'll be back in about five or six minutes' time with the second half.
Teams back out for the second half and some nice messages coming through. Thank you to Karen McGoldrick who got in touch on Twitter and says she's watching and supporting from St Ronan's Primary School and listen to Ski and wants a shout out for Mrs Smith and P6. Let's go St Aidan's Daryl Lynn. Good support there from Fermanagh. Gareth Johnston on Facebook says watching from sunny Perth in Australia. Great to have you with us. Gareth, what is it, about midnight out there? Noel McBaron Magashi says so proud as a past pupil. Great to be watching. Good luck, St Aidan's Abu. Thank you for those lovely messages. I'm glad everyone is enjoying the coverage. I just feel that there's going to be more excitement in this second half and Kalastia first year are more than capable of getting a goal and that could just change everything but it just depends on how they get it together in the second half here and if they find another way through the direct ball hasn't really worked let's see in the second half if they can do something different so it's Kalasha first year in the green against an Aidens from Derlin in the black and amber in the Danske Bank Ulster Schools McCormick Cup final Second half then, Martin Coyle from Cookstown gets us underway. And on the break, it's Cusick. Ocean Cusick gets possession for his team. And I think maybe they've been listening because this is better. Kept possession, nice and composed, and worked it through. Trying to carry it in. Now they put the ball in there. Oh, great ball as well, and it nearly fell. Well, it wasn't just McKenna in there. The two players in there, but Derry Lynn, much too cute to fall for that. The ball in needed to be good, and I thought it was good, but they're just not, it's not sticking. But hold on. Oh, the captain did well there, but he's hurt himself. Oh, and that's a big, big blow. That looks like a nasty injury for the Kalasha first year captain. But he did keep possession. He's still on the pitch, but he's gone down. He's in a lot of pain. And this is McKenna getting on with the game. Can they get their first score of the game? He slips it to Roberts, who's wearing 24, but started the game. His kick doesn't go high enough, but it might end up still in a the score. There's a lot of black and amber there. Now it's a free out. Free out. Big problem for the Belfast College here because the captain is injured. He is really struggling and it's looking like he might have to be replaced. He was hurt in the first half and it looks like he's either been hurt again or a new injury. Here's a chance on the break. They've got it turned over and now they've got... The right man on the ball, Noah McDonnell, Noah O'Donnell rather, he's quite an athlete and he's still going, now he's well pursued there, but they have possession, have they kept it in? No they haven't, it's gone over the line, free out. Don't see any other changes or any changes that have been made at half time, but both teams have huge panels, I read out all the subs at the start. So both teams will be thinking about bringing on fresh legs, I'm sure, but they might be forced into a change. They won't want to take off their captain, and we'll keep an eye on him to see how he's going. Now that kick out has gone right over the line, and O'Donnell takes it quickly. Good possession, and there's space here for Roberts. And the shot comes in from Dara Quinn, that's ambitious. I think he was going for a point, but it might end up more than that. They keep it in, no they don't, it's gone over. And good pressing at the start of the second half from the Belfast boys. Certainly starting in the right manner and trying to get a score. Been unlucky in the first three minutes, but they're going the right way about it. Darren Maguire with the luminous green boots. Not sure they go with the jersey. Not very cowards. That one's spilled and it's a free for the boys in green. O'Donnell looks to take it. Gives it to Scullion. I'm just looking off camera around the square and this is where it's going. It's gone deep. It might go all the way over the bar, you know, and it does. And that's their first score of the game. And they really, really needed that. Four minutes into the second half, and it was a great dig in the end. Never mind trying to put it in there. 
for the forwards. He just went direct and put it straight over the bar. And they really, really needed to get on the scoreboard. And they're five points behind all of a sudden. And they deserve that for their good start in the second half. Six points to one. Referee holding things up here because there's a little bit of silly stuff going on. Between a couple of players down to our left. And Martin is just going to calm that down a little bit. The crowd are reacting though. They're enjoying it. But yeah, maybe that's another sign as well as the score that we have a bit of a game on here now. The tempo's just gone up. From the kick out, it's Tomas Cathcart, the number 14 for Derry Lynn, doing really well. Well, I thought he had, I thought he got possession there, but it's Kalasha first. You're winning the ball back really well at the start of the second half. And this is Scullion again. So they are pressing and they have a free. The game all being played from left to right at the minute. I did say if Kalasha first you could get a score. That's our captain involved again. He's fine, which is great news as well for them. And he spreads the ball nicely to Roberts. And Roberts spreads the ball back the other way. They might want to work it to O'Donnell. This is Scullion. This is McKenna looking for another score. Does he get it? Oh, it's just gone to the left, I think. Or has it gone over? Oh, he's got it. He has got it. Two in a row. Well, it's like buses. You don't get one for half an hour and then two arrive. Two points for Kalasja first year after five minutes of the second half. They are re really making a game of this and they've taken their points with ease. Those two kicks all of a sudden after all the difficulties in scoring in the game so far. They've put over two points with ease. So St. Aidan's. What can they do? Oh the big fella catches it brilliantly. That's Tomas Cathcart. That's a brilliant bit of fielding. But... It doesn't stick in the forwards. That's the best catch of the day by Cathcart. This is O'Donnell. Oh, what a brilliant pass. He wellied that out to the left-hand side. And Kalasja first year certainly have not been put off by not scoring in the first half. They're going about their business really well in the second. This is Roberts. Left-footed, comes back out, and they're more composed. They must have had the message at halftime, and they're certainly booting the ball all over the place. This is great to watch. Never mind the hand passing. Scullion comes in with a kick. It doesn't connect very well, though, and the keeper gets it. Oh, and it's intercepted there, though, by Fionn McCallan. And Derry Lynn struggling to clear their lines. And indeed, Scullion has it back for Kalasja first. Yeah, they've done really well in the second half, winning a lot of the 50-50s, and a couple of points as well. We're now over 910 devices. That's gone out of play. So the pressure will come right back again. Seven minutes into the second half and it's been one-way traffic. Aaron Quinn is looking for the ball over in the middle here. It's not coming that way, not just yet anyway. Terry Lynn have dropped off. And can last you first, you have McKenna here. He got their second point, dropping a little bit deep. But he's run into trouble. And it's been turned over. And won back by Gavin McCann. And this one has stuck. This is Dan O'Connor. And Terry Lynn getting up the field for the first time, really, in the second half. It's good play by O'Connor holding it up. Leaves it off to Ronan Fitzpatrick, to Cathcart. It remains six points to two. Now, there's somebody telling me on the messages that Ocean Cusack is actually St. Paul's. I was told he was Sarsfields. Clubs beside each other, of course. Substitution coming up for St. Aidan's, but we go on with the play in the meantime, and that's a great catch and a mark call as well. I told you the big fella McKenna has come out of full forward. He's getting involved down the pitch a little bit. They were using him as a target man in the first half, and they're still booting the ball in there. Roberts is there, and that is the number 11, Cusick, trying to get clear. Oh, and he well, he's that one. Has he got it over? He has from a very narrow angle, and he's got a score, and that's three in a row. The Belfast boys are buzzing and they are coming back into this game. 
Connellis was watching from Connellis and Belnalek. He says, come on, St. Aidan's. Six points to three. And a couple of substitutions, or maybe just the one being made. Definitely one for St. Aidan's. 15 is going off. That is Owen McTernan. So Dom Corrigan and Richie O'Callaghan making a switch. And they've sent in 17. That is Matthew Ferguson. Maguire. He's going long. He's going to the right. And there's three men in green there, and they prevail. It's McCallan with it, number 12. Oh, and a challenge going in there that the referee didn't like. He's going to have a word here, or at least the word might even be a yellow card. And it's McMahon, the captain of Kalestia Firstia, who has gone down. He's up again, thankfully. He's been in the wars today, but he's struggling on for his team. And it was a yellow card indeed. First of the game. First sub and first yellow card. So from 6 3, 6 0 rather to 6 3, they've halved the deficit 10 minutes into the second half and it sort of mirrored the first half because now it's Derry Lynn who haven't scored in this half. So all the scoring has been at the goals over to the right. There might be another one here. He fancies it. What a dig. And it's gone all the way. The keeper has to deal with this. And he did just about. Dara Quinn, three men around him. He's trying to burst through, though, and he goes low and gets it back again. What a live wire this kid is from Neavena. And that was a foul. And the referee saw that late challenge, and it's going to be a free in. You have to really credit the Belfast boys for the way they've come out in the second half. And I know a lot of the momentum and the online commentary has favoured St. Aidan's Derry Lynn and indeed the big crowd here today and the narrative has been for them in their first Ulster final in 51 years but Kalastra first year are facing into all that and they're standing up to it three in a row could it be four it is beautifully taken by I think it was number 24 Christopher Roberts wearing 24 but he started the game there's now only two points in it. This has got really, really interesting. At the start of the second half, I was kind of hoping for a comeback to make it more interesting. I know St. Aidan's wouldn't appreciate that, but Kalashia have really delivered. I wasn't sure if they would, but boy, have they done so. Oh, my goodness. That's two fantastic catches by McKenna. What an asset he is. What a skill it is and what delight it is to see that skill. And it might end up in a goal or a push. And is it outside the area? Is it going to be a goal? The referee is coming in. Certainly the player ended up in. It's a free in, not a penalty. I thought it was outside. It was certainly a crude challenge. And it all came about from that fantastic catch from McKenna. We'd love to see high fielding in the game. But could so easily have been a goal which would have certainly stopped the comeback or halted the comeback if it had been a goal. But a point will still put three points in it for Derry Lynn. But the referee talking to the player who made that challenge and it was very crude. I wonder what colour this is going to be. This could be a key moment. It's yellow for Jared Doak. And he, by the way, also doesn't have a club. He's not affiliated to a club. Same as Noah O'Donnell. So Dan O'Connor, we expect to just pop this over and make it 7-4. Surprising, really, that we haven't had a goal in this game. It feels like we have. We've had certainly plenty of close ones but no goals yet I wonder will there be one and clearly it would have a massive impact on the game either way seven points to four 
Oh, great catch again. We are being treated to an exhibition of great fielding on both sides. And great kick passing as well. Kalastra first year putting up a great display in the second half. And this fellow's been at the centre of it. McKenna, he's come out the field a lot. He's knitting it together and he's getting involved a lot and they're working the ball in better than they did in the first half. Now still the kick is coming in high. The keeper's going to have to deal with this one too and he does but it's spilled and Cusick might get it. He's trying to get it. He's under pressure and eventually it's Derry Lynn who get it through their number 14, Cathcart. You just wonder if one of those high balls is going to drop into the net. Dara Quinn has won it back. That's a super interception. He's been certainly one of the players of the match. And in about oh, 10 minutes, well, maybe less, I'll be asking for your contenders for player of the match. We're just going into the last quarter presently. I'll be interested to see who you think. Lots of great performances and lots of fantastic wholehearted commitment. James McNally. Derry Lynn dropping off and number six Rory Scullion from Gordon Amona in Belfast coming forward gives it to McNally again they have a certain goal threat about them they haven't got one yet they came close in the first half they hit the bar and they hit the upper part of the post they've come close to scores they've got scores now and that's going to be a free for the challenge by Ray on Finbar McKernan, he's from the ODs, the O'Donnell's Club in Belfast. Actually, I think I read that wrong. I picked out the wrong number 10, did I? Was it 10, Finbar? Anyway, it was a good shout-out for the ODs. Or maybe he didn't start. Maybe that was uh, who the 24 came in for. I've just worked that out. Took me a while, sorry. This is Roberts now. He put one over a minute ago. Ah, that's a great kick. That was harder than it looked and with the crowd booing as well. But the young fella measured it and took it over from distance and brings it back to a two-point game with 14 minutes to go. It's very tense and very interesting here at Ahar St. McCartan's. And the St. Aidan's crowd are a little bit muted now. They haven't had much to shout about in the second half and you can almost sense their nerves. They're getting close to the line, but can I ask you first, Jim? Have scored five times in the second half to only one point in reply for Derry Lynn. Now, is the big fella 14 there? No, this time it's the other 14. It is McKenna doing well. He's really come into the game in the second half. This is Roberts. He scored two lovely frees. He's got a nice tidy left foot. Number eight, Barry El Hueta from Gordon Amona involved as well. Now the captain, McMahon. Back out to Aaron Quinn, to Roberts, to McMahon. Feeds it into McKenna. Is there a way through? Two points down. Oh, that's nice play by McKenna to the captain, but rather easily blocked for Terry Lynn. And they have a chance now to break. One point in the second half and it was some of three. So they haven't scored from play. And they've really lost their way. They can't seem to knit it together at all in the second half. Oshinhini is down for a minute. He's taken a knock there in that little exchange. And here comes the ball in again direct to the forwards of McKenna. Fighting his man off with one hand and trying to catch it with the other. Lovely little skill in there in close quarters, and he wins it. That's brilliant play by Nathan McKenna. 15 years old yesterday. And surely Roberts will take this. He's put over two beautifully from a similar angle. And this, if he gets it over, and you could put money on him, would bring it back to a one-point game. And you wouldn't have thought that at halftime. The drums beat... The crowd try to put him off. Oh, and he puts this one over to the left and wide. Tough one for the young fella. Remains a two-point game.
Keeper really taking his time with these kickouts. I'm sure the referee's keeping an eye on that. But do you really better get on with the game? A two points down, and that kickout has gone straight to Kalastia first year to Fuin, Fuin McCallan and Fion feeds it inside to McKenna. McKenna's bursting through, can't get through, and eventually the kick comes in, and it's easy for the keeper. But again, it's a threat of a score. And it's really become a bit of a war of attrition in the second half. Can Kalastia first year turn this over and get into the lead? They keep kicking it away, Derry Lynn. And Kalastia first year get it again. So much one-way traffic in the second half. They look for Roberts, but that might be too far, and it is. Cathcart gets it down the line to Kieran Shannon, the joint captain. Off he goes. Oh, he's well marshaled this time. Oh, and the fullback did brilliantly there. Jared Doak didn't foul him. Cleared his lines very well, although it is a Derry Lynn ball. And off camera and seeing the Derry Lynn number four, Devin Quinn from Bell and the Lake, going all the way back into defence, even though his team have the ball in the forwards, they're very conscious of their defence. In fact, I think they've at least one extra player back there at all times. That's why every time the ball has come in high, they've snuffed it out. They've men back who have been defending very well. That's a decent effort. Surely not. Oh, pick that out, the score of the game. Just when it was needed, Dan O'Connor, the joint captain, delivers with a smashing point. The black and amber flags go up to acknowledge that superb bit of skill. Puts his team back in front by two. Could be a crucial score. Three, sorry, three points in it. I thought it was three, but I looked down rather than at the scoreboard over there. It puts three in it. Crucial score that puts three points in it with just 10 minutes to go. Substitute is on the number 19. I mentioned him at the end of the first half. He finally has come on. That's Sean McGuire. Or rather, that's uh, the wrong number 19. That's the Derry Lynn number 19. The 19 is Dulta Keenan. He's on. Brilliant again from McKenna. Fielding in the middle of the field and gets his kick in just about. Aaron Quinn comes in. Oh, off the ground. He's disappointed and frustrated by that. Three points in it and a free in. Derry Lynn coming back into it. And it's Cathcart again. At the centre of it. Well, I told you we'd get to 1,000 devices. We're now at 1,100 devices. That is incredible. Can't beat an early morning game, can you, in the Ulster schools? A lot of interest, a lot of excitement in this game. Just to put that into context, 1,100 is devices, not people. That is absolutely huge. 13 has gone off for Kalastia first year. That's Tomas Adams, by the way. So we're into the last seven and a half minutes. St. Aidan's Derry Lynn. 51 years they have been in operation. And this is their first boys Ulster final. They lead by three. They did lead by six. The big fellas up the middle. Go for it. And they don't have a clean catch this time. Instead, Kalasha first, he win it on the break. McMahon looks to make something happen. Doesn't just kick it forward aimlessly, though. St. Aidan's dropping deep. They have extra players back there. So will the Belfast boys pick off the scores? Will they pick off points or will they go for a goal? McMahon feeds it out under pressure. This is Cusick. Tries to burst through and he does. Nice little solo. He tries to fend off the challenges and it's a free in. He gets a free. Great direct forward running. And he wasn't too far away from the square either. Roberts will put this over and make it a two-point game. 
22 is on for Derry Lynn, by the way. I must have missed that. I just spotted him. Ben Milanofi. You see him in the picture there. But it's 24 with the ball. Two point game. Six minutes to go. These must be tense moments for everyone from St. Aidan's Derry Lynn that are here and at the school. Is there anyone in the school today? Maybe not. The principal, Pat McTaggart, is here. Of course, he's always been at the school. He was a pupil in 1972. Came back as a teacher in 1983. He's been principal for 10 years. And boy, would he love to see his school win this here today. The Danske Bank Ulster Schools McCormick Cup. They are within touching distance, but it's tense. And Scullion is trying to win it back for his school and does. It's been an almighty effort by the Belfast School in the second half. Their manager told me they're a great bunch and they really are. They've applied themselves brilliantly. That's Quinn going forward. No foul, says the referee. They have showed amazing heart in the second half to keep going. That ball has gone all the way through and it's well dealt with by Jared Doak, the fullback. A lot of these lads play a lot of soccer. They aren't just Gaelic players. But they have applied themselves so well and the coaches have obviously done brilliantly as well. And they have responded to the commitment from the likes of Ryan Paul Callahan on paternity leave but insisted, fair play to him, for getting special permission to come and help out here today on this special occasion for Kalastia First Year. And the boys on the pitch have not let them down. They have the right attitude. They're playing the game well and off the field. They clean the dressing rooms. They respect the jerseys. And they are bringing great credit to their school and the area in West Belfast on the Falls Road there in the second half. I love the way O'Donnell kicks the ball around so freely and so accurately. Trying to get the team going though and it's a free out. They're pushing and pressing, but they just aren't getting through. And I'm not sure. They might be going to run out of time here. And Derry Lynn might even get a score here. Now, that's a tough challenge. The referee didn't like that, and neither did a lot of the crowd. He certainly caught him as he came in and changed his body shape there. And it's the captain, McMahon, who's in bother here. And he's pleading his innocence. Three minutes to go in normal time. We're going to have a good bit of added time, I would imagine. But is there time for Kalastia first year? Have they left it too late? That's the question. Well, I haven't watched any of the McCrory Cup coverage, but if it's as good as this, you must be getting well treated these days because this has been fantastic. Remember, this is grade D, I believe. Yellow card shown. Shows you the strength and the interest and the enthusiasm, the passion, the organisation, the commitment of Ulster Schools right down through all of their many, many competitions and the contribution that they make over the years to Ulster football going forward cannot really be underestimated and can't even really be measured. It's that huge. And obviously the sponsors, Danske Bank, have been behind it for so many years. And that has been crucial. Kalastia first year making a substitution. And 22 has come on for them. That's Fintan McCollum. And I think he is replacing Barry Elgueta, the number 8 in the middle of the field. And he has. We get on with the game then. 58 minutes. Two minutes of normal time to go. And it's O'Connor looking for a score. Does brilliantly, but is it on target? Don't think so. Looked very, very close from this angle, but it's hard to tell coming in. He struck it nicely. Now, Kalastra first, you need to get up the pitch quickly. They'll be looking for McKenna in the middle of the field, the big fella. He's calling for it. He has his hand up. Doak is going to kick it. He's looking for him, but can he find him? 
Going straight for him. It's well directed. Oh, he was very unlucky there, but he gets help. The sub has just come in, but he touched it on the ground. Derry Lynn are close. This is the substitute for them. 17, Matthew Ferguson. He does brilliantly to win a free. And that is worth its weight in gold at this point in the game because it kills the counter attack. They have a two point lead. Eats up a bit of time and gives them a chance of another score. Has he got it? He has. The crowd answered me. They answered you. With 30 seconds to go, there's three in it. Kalascha first you need a goal. And they go for a short kick out this time, which is good because it means they get possession. That's good thinking. Derry Lynn just dropped off and switched off a little bit there. So they have possession. Can they work a goal? They get it to Scullion. Dara Quinn inevitably involved. Now Scullion. This is the point in the game where they need to get something. Is he going charging? No. Slips it. Serious pressure. But Cusick has it. Now he is charging. And that is going to be a free out. Resolute defence from Derry Lynn. You have to give them that. They're back in numbers. But they stand in the right way. And they do not let anything go through. No goals in this game, which is really surprising. Sometimes at this level, you can get five or six, not one. Now, there was one chance in the first half that hit the post. Another hit the bar. They have come close. But overall, the stout defending from Derry Lynn has been a serious feature of this game. No way through. We are now in added time. I think there'll be a good three minutes or so. So there is time, but we've already had 61 minutes and there's been no way to goal, but hold a minute, because Finn, Fionn McCallan has it and gets it up to Dara Quinn and there's room here, this comes over, oh what a brilliant interception, he took that superbly and he might get a free, it's a number six, the centre half back, that's brilliant defending again and it's Alex McCaffrey from Timor Shamrocks who got there, crucial interception, 62 62nd minute Donegan fouled McCann oh he's got it tough challenge from McMahon coming in and he did one of those a minute ago and got booked and this could be a second booking and this could be a red I think it's the same guy it's definitely another yellow is it not the same? It is, yeah, it's the same guy he knew. So it's disappointment for the young lad, the captain, who was injured early on. And despite that, he kept going manfully and bravely. Oh, that's a poor kick. There might be a chance for a counter-attack here. Is there time? That should have been four in it. That should have ended it. But instead, we have a chance here for Kalastia first. Yeah, a goal will still force extra time. The substitute has it. Number 22. That's McCollum. Is there going to be a dramatic twist at the end of this game? It's a free in. Now... All hands to the pump. Oh, he's gone backwards. I thought he was going to just put it in there, but they've gone backwards, and McKenna is going to get it. Again, this is a number 14. They're just playing around with the ball out here, but their tactic for most of this game is just to pump it in there. They're going sideways. Heaney. They're going to try and work it in, are they? This is Quinn. One of the twins gets a kick on it. Off oh, the crossbar. Oh, my goodness. So, so close, and it's going to be a free out. Derry Lynn survived, but what an effort by Aaron Quinn from the Nirvana Club in Belfast. Oh, what drama. So, so close, Kalastia Fersch. They've been so far behind. Six points down at half time. That would have leveled it. St. Aidan survive, and they get another free. And it's Cathcart again. I'll certainly take your contenders for player of the match now, and Cathcart has to be up there. This is Donegan. 
You just wonder what would have happened if that goal had went in. And that's a high one, and it's a wide one. 63 minutes, 44 seconds. We're approaching the 65th minute. There cannot be long left. Derry Lynn lining up a substitute. He can't come in, though, because the ball is back in the play. Who's going to win this ball? It's crucial. It breaks to McKenna, who's had a brilliant second half. A tug, well, more like a rugby tackle pull on the jersey there on the shorts. And I think to stop me, here comes Cusick. And he is stopped in his tracks by the number two, Lawrence Dune from Derry Lynn. But the pressure still comes. They still go so direct. Kalastia first, yeah. But Terry Lynn get it back and they clear their lines once again. And that's it. What a moment for the school. Thomas Cathcart, one of the players of the match. Look at the players running onto the pitch. What a moment. The boys in black and amber have brought glory to their school. 51 years it has taken for them to get to an Ulster final. But when they've got there, they have won it. Unbelievable scenes in this Danska Bank Ulster Schools McCormick Cup final. And there is a lovely, lovely shot of Dara Donegan. Despite all the celebrations and the excitement respecting his opponent and Kalastia first year flattened. They are down because they put in a superhuman effort in the second half and came so, so close with the ball that hit the bar right at the end. They give it everything. They are a supreme credit to their school, to their managers, to their families, to their clubs. Because they were 6-0 down at halftime and they fought gamely. They dominated the second half. That fellow was fantastic in the second half. A few brilliant catches. He certainly is up there for my player of the match. But I'd like to hear your contenders as well. Who do you think is player of the match from that game? We have a few minutes at least, I'd say, until we have the cup presentation. So we'll have time for that. There's also a contender coming in. Nathan McKenna for Man of the Match says Fra. Good shout. Bernie Fahey says Cathcart. And Dara McKenna gets a shout. Indeed, another shout. Who else have we got? Any other contenders coming in? Keep them coming over the next few minutes. I'll give you a few from my own point of view. I mean, the whole defence for Derry Lynn was terrific. Alex McCaffrey with that interception near the end. Ryan Ray was excellent in the first half when they dominated going forwards. Dan O'Connor got an important score in the second half. An absolutely cracking score it was too for Kalastia first year. Jared Duke was solid at fullback. Dara Quinn at right half. Twin of Aaron who hit the bar. Dara all through the game was terrific. Ocean Cusick in the shot there. He went direct as he could all the way through and took the game to them. And of course, Nathan McKenna at 14. And you have to mention Conal McMahon, the captain. Despite being injured, he battled and battled for his team. And one other fella I would mention, well, Rory Scullion actually deserves a huge mention as well. A centre half pack at a great game. But also Noah O'Donnell at number nine. Well, I don't know if they have scouts in Gaelic football, but... If there is such a thing, they'll be queuing up to sign him. He was in the match programme today as not having or being affiliated to a GEA club. You want to get him on board. He was terrific. The black and amber out on the pitch. The jerseys of the players, the flags, the hats, the scarves of all the supporters. I don't think we're going to have the presentation anytime soon, so... It'll be a couple of minutes, but we will stay on for it. I can't see the cup out on the pitch there. And Tommy Rogers, the coordinator of the McCormick Cup, has it. He's kind of walking a lone furrow at the minute, but he's out in the middle. And if he gets the captain, we might have a presentation. Aoife Cathcart, unsurprisingly, goes for Tomas Cathcart for a man of the match and gives a red heart as well. Well, even though you must be related... I'd agree with you. He was terrific. Connor Lyon says Cathcart is the goat. <laughs> he is indeed. And Rory Scullion gets a mention as well as Nathan McKenna for Colastia first year. And indeed I'd go for that. Kieran Boyd says Fionn McCallan or Rory Scullion. Good shouts again. And Kieran Flanagan says Cathcart. He's a proud former pupil, by the way, watching in Milton Keynes. That's from Kieran Flanagan. Thank you, Kieran. And Des McLaughlin says great to see 
Football Live. Connor Lyons says, what a nerve-wracking end. I'm sure it was. And what else have we got? Alex McCaffrey gets a good shout as well from Oren McCory. Congratulations, St. Aidan, says Anne McGarty. And who else have we got? One or two coming in as I speak. Martina Story, says Tomas Cathcart as well. Andrew Moynihan knows, was this the Ulster B Schools final? Well, would you believe this is grade D? And yet look at the talent, the commitment, the organisation. This is, this is Ulster Schools. If you don't know your Ulster Schools, this is the way they run things up here. And they're about to run the presentation. The cup is out. Thank the rest of indeed. There's one of the photographers. They're trying to organise happening because all the people are right there. And the family are right there and uh, they forgot. And he must be so proud of them. But imagine six points to nothing down at half time. Inched back point by point. And even though they were down to 14 men, they nearly got a goal right at the end. Andrew Moynihan replies again, says Ulster Schools always goes one step beyond. He says he's always complimented it. Fair play. Conal McManus says it's Cathcart for man of the match. Now the player's coming over. So we will have a presentation imminently. The cup, by the way, the McCormick Cup, is named after Mick McCormick. Who was Mick McCormick? Well, he played for St. McCartan's Monaghan and won. The holders are Moville Community College. Now, we're hoping that the cup will be presented by Tony McCaffrey and it'll be a special moment for him from the Derry Lynn School for many, many years and a former secretary of Ulster Vocational Schools before they merged with Ulster Colleges. And in the middle there as well, you'll find somewhere Dominic Corrigan, winning manager with St. Michael's in a skill for many years and the likes of the McCrory Cup and even the Hogan Cup, the All-Ireland. But here he is back with his old school and winning and creating history for them. Well, the narrative was all about St. Aidan's. They had messages from Peter Canavan, Malachi O'Rourke, another former pupil. And at the top of the shot there, you see the manager, Richie O'Callaghan, in the beard. There he is, just to the right. There he is, just up a bit, left a bit, up a bit. There he is. That's Richie O'Callaghan. Big, big smile on his face. That's going to be there for a while. Well done to him. He got a little bit of help from Dom Corrigan and a few others. But really, he was the man. And he did a great job there today. But boy, he must have been tense and nervous in that second half. Now, there's no tannoy system here. So I'll try and relate to you what I said when the speech is being made. But we will stay on to see the magic moment, the historic moment for St. Aidan's. The support from the community has been unreal. And as the principal, Pat McTaggart, said, it's, the school is all about the community. They're all here today. Their girls won a, or played in an Ulster final in 2008 with the likes of Joanne Doonan. But it's, today is all about the boys. They're a small school, but they have big names behind them. And there's been a big, big interest. Remember the numbers. Kalastia first year from West Belfast. 945 pupils in the school. St. Uh, Aidan's Derry Lynn 255 and half of them are girls so that gives you an indication of the achievement by the school in Fermanagh now we're getting close there's a photograph being taken but I don't think they've got the cup yet history for the black and amber from Derry Lynn these boys by the way under 16 and a half fifth years I uh, presume there is going to be an official handover in there somewhere. 
So I'll keep talking for a minute and we'll stay on just to get this moment. And yeah, they're trying to back people off. There's Raf Gatt, who's been a stalwart of Ulster Colleges and Schools for many, many years and is responsible for the terrific All-Stars trophies. And they're making a little bit of room here and now we're going to have some sort of a formal presentation. James McManus watching from Mulligans in Newton Butler. Ryan, well done, St. Aidan's watching from Longford. Proud past pupil Pauline Lennon. Thank you, Pauline. Hope you enjoyed the coverage. At one stage, we were well over 1,100 devices, which is definitely some sort of record. Huge audience and a little bit of history today bringing this game to you. Now, the photographers look ready. Tommy Rogers is there with the cup, and I think he's about to address the crowd. And the captain, well, there's two captains. Dan O'Connor from Belnalek. Kieran Shannon from Timor. So the two boys will be coming up, and indeed, Tommy is now speaking. So he is the coordinator of the competition. So I imagine he's thanking the officials and the referee, Martin Coyle, and he'll be thanking the host club as well here, Ahar St. McCartan. So you always do a terrific job. We are here quite frequently. And they have been superb from early, early morning when we got here about 9.30. Everything always runs like clockwork here. Uh, he'll be thanking the sponsors, Danske Bank. And he no doubt will be praising Kalastia first year for their efforts here today. They lost every game in the competition last year. They've made serious improvement, so they deserve immense credit. So Tommy having a few final words and then we will see that silver cup lifted and handed to the captains and there is the applause. That's probably for Kalashia first year. A generous round of applause from the crowd for them as well. Lots of kids running about here and some sort of microphone being handed over, but I don't think it's for us to hear, unfortunately. It's the lady with the very colourful headgear. She was beating a drum earlier on, and I'm not joking, it was a boron, I think. Getting the crowd going. Just going to check your messages one last time. If there's any other contenders for player of the match, if not, I'm officially, unofficially giving it to Thomas Cathcart. Very tempted to give it to one of the Kalastia first year players because there were three or four absolute heroes, and it was one of those games that you know it was two a game of two halves. Hard then to pick a player of the match, but I guess it has to go to the winners. And for them, you would imagine Cathcart. So well done to him from Kinali. Vincent Burns says, Well done, Terry Lynn from Vincent Belcou and Belfast. He says, And now Tommy. I think is wrapping up. And we're calling the number 11 and the number 12. It was Dan O'Connor who went up and took the toss. I imagine both captains will come forward. There is Dan, you see number 11 just about to come forward. History in the making for Derry Lynn then. Formed in 1973. And this is their first Ulster final for the boys to get to, despite all of those famous names that have been at the school down the years. And remember, Malik O'Rourke was there, now manager of the Waddy Grahams, who had that great win over Kilmacud Crokes last week. It's been a long time waiting. We don't mind waiting another moment or two. And here come the joint captains. Dan O'Connor, number 11, from Belnalek. Kieran Shannon, number 12. They get their hands on the Danske Bank Ulster Schools McCormick Cup. The photographs are taken of the historic moment. It's taken 51 years. Richie O'Callaghan in the background is still sporting a big beaming smile. And why not? A brilliant achievement for St. Aidan's in Derry Lynn to win this, or if you're from down there, you'll know it as Derelin. 
the whole community it seems is here today and a large audience online as well to see them get over the line and create history remember just 255 pupils in the school and half of them are girls who got to a final in 2008 they got there before the boys but the boys have now arrived in style and that cup presented by Tony McCaffrey another stalwart as well formerly of Ulster Vocational Schools and of St Aidan's and Derry Lynn what a proud moment and how apt it is that he is in the middle there as well and the photographers having their moment but wait just wait until they are finished and then here we go the captains bring it to the players history for Derry Lynn delight for Derry Lynn champions winners of the 2024 Danske Bank Ulster Schools McCormick Cup 51 years in the making but the amount of people that have contributed down those years all deserve credit today and you have to think of their principal Pat McTaggart he's been at the school as he says himself as a man and boy a pupil in 1972 came back as a teacher in 1983 a principal for 10 years and he now finally gets to see that precious moment I hope you've enjoyed the live stream coverage we'll go down and do a few interviews and put those up online as well because we have to hear from these boys and their managers and everybody else down there not that there's anybody budging look at that huge crowd what a delight it has been to bring you this historic coverage here today started in the morning we're now in the afternoon but it's success in the end all round and a great day not just for the school but for Gaelic football and we're just going to do one last thing actually I've just spotted I was going to close it down but I'm going to ask my cameraman to do one last thing and it is really really apt there is a shot I want to finish on and there is the godfather of Fermanagh football Peter McGinnity is just over to our left I've just spotted him up in the stand and I want to get a shot of him before we finish isn't that the way to finish and Pat Blake is behind him as well the great sponsor from Derry Lynn there is Peter McGinnity all-star from Fermanagh and what a legend down the years he's got his Fermanagh hat on as well and just over to the left and well Sean McGordy's in that shot as well and just back over to the left you might just see Pat Blake at the back there in the white or grey hair at the back and he's such a great supporter of the schools as well and they're sponsored by the way by N Cirque this year as well and that's all contributed and Peter McGinnity looking down and smiling and loving what he is seeing success an Ulster title for Fermanagh that's the way to finish it and the young fellas jumping up and down in the foreground as well trying to get on the camera that's a lovely way to finish it the photograph finally been taken of the team out there as well and one more cheer and that's it from Ahar in County Tyrone it's goodbye <laughs>